I give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. President, we are grateful to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres for the information he has provided on developments in Ethiopia. We also welcome the participation in today's meeting of the permanent representative of Ethiopia to the United Nations, Taya Selassie. First and foremost, we'd like to congratulate all Ethiopians on the forming of the new government on the 4th of October. The conclusion of the electoral process is confirmation that the Ethiopian political forces are ready for dialogue in order to find solutions to problems that the whole population of the country is facing in order to develop the state, to promote peace and well-being. The Russian Federation continues to support the territorial integrity, sovereignty and independence of our friends in Ethiopia. We continue to follow very closely the development of the military and political situation in the north of the country. We still believe that the Tigray dossier is an internal affair of Ethiopia and the national uh, capacity for reconciliation hasn't been exhausted. We also believe that Addis Ababa, it is within the power of Addis Ababa to solve its own problems with the support of the international community, first and foremost representatives of the region. In this connection, we support efforts to find a resolution taken by the recently appointed High Representative for the African Union on the Horn of Africa, Alessugan Abasanjo. We know that he is already working hard and has established initial contacts with the Ethiopian capital. We're looking forward to specific results from this work. At the same time, we do believe that deliberately toning up international rhetoric as regards the situation in the north of the country and spiralling politicisation of the humanitarian file only hinders Pan the Pan-African organisation's work for mediation efforts. Bearing in mind the seriousness of the dispute and the complex historical context, this will not be a speedy process. Therefore, only coordinated efforts and diligent diplomatic work, including through bilateral channels, can bear fruit. We are certain that pressure involving this UN Security Council, threats and of resolutions and the imposition of unlawful unilateral sanctions and the creation of a toxic atmosphere in the media is counterproductive. President, as regards the humanitarian situation in the north of Ethiopia, we fully share the concerns as regards the growing humanitarian needs there. The region, which even before the crisis was unstable from the point of view of food security, is currently in particularly dire straits. The ongoing violence in Tigray and in neighbouring regions of Amhara and Afar are seriously compounding the broader situation and provoking new flows of IDPs and refugees. There are also specific problems that require urgent response and which, as we believe, can and must be resolved immediately. First and foremost, we mean the situation surrounding the World Food Programme trucks stranded in Tigray. And we believe it is unacceptable to block transport from UN humanitarian organisations, let alone use them for other purposes. We've said on many occasions at the Security Council and other platforms that the media focus exclusively on the humanitarian situation in Tigray leads to a politicisation of this issue and creates further dividing lines in Ethiopian society. We cannot minimise the misfortune of people living in the regions of Afar and Hamar who have not been suffering any less and also problems in other regions of the country. President. Russia has always supported humanitarian efforts of the UN. And we express our gratitude to humanitarian and medical workers who, in difficult and often dangerous conditions, provide urgent humanitarian assistance to all those who need it in the most remote, remote corners of the planet, including in Ethiopia. Every year, we make our own financial contribution to the work of a host of uh, programmes and funds. We intend to continue this assistance 
providing experience and expertise to the U humanitarian wing of the UN. We regret the decision made last week by Addis Ababa to expel UN officials. This, of course, will not help resolve the severe humanitarian crisis in the country. At the same time, we would call for not to dramatise what happened. We believe that through mutually respectful dialogue, Addis Ababa and the Secretariat will be able to re-establish trust and amicably solve the disagreement that has arisen in the interests of the people who need assistance. Here, there are still many questions, particularly as regards steps that were or weren't taken to prevent a negative turn of events. In this connection, it's particularly important to tread carefully and learn from this so that these kind of incidents don't happen again in the future. Much like for other situations around the world, we insist that humanitarian uh, assistance should be provided fully in line with UN General Assembly Resolution 46182 and the UN Guiding Principles, as well as international law and national legislation. We must once again state of the vital need for credible and constructive dialogue and also close cooperation with the sovereign Ethiopian authorities who continue to cover the lion's share of all humanitarian needs in Tigray and in neighbouring regions. In conclusion, we would like to reaffirm Russia's readiness to continue to support the normalisation of the situation in Ethiopia and in the Horn of Africa as a whole. Thank you for your attention. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for her statement.